Minister and carried on Chair. as remedying some Mr. of those Honourable problems. Honourable Morris Williamson. Mr Chairman, uh, I want to take the next few minutes, if I can, to just address four of the SOPs that uh, Phil Twyford has uh, put on the table. And, sir, I fully believe he's put them in good faith and he deserves for us to give a, a proper response. So if I can take them in turn. SOP 250, uh, it's a, an SOP that seeks to uh, reduce the protection of other people by allowing them to be joined in litigation. It could mean that, for example, the Crown could be joined in litigation, the Council could be, or even other contributing parties to the proceedings, sir. And I want to make it clear that I don't think that that's what this legislation is about. Uh, councils, first of all, will not participate. They've made it quite clear that if they're going to put their 25 per cent contribution into the fixing of a home, they will not do that if it means that they either could be uh, brought into a litigation after at any rate, or even by way of a circuitous route by being joined in a litigation at some stage later. So the scheme's not about apportioning responsibility uh, and, and so on. It's about actually just trying to get houses fixed. And if we were to accept SOP 250, that would actually open up some of the litigation channels and I think it would be a problem. So it's not just the Crown and councils. It could impact on a number of building firms who have said to me they're dubious about participating. And these are good builders who we need to have involved. They're dubious about involvement, but if we open it up to their litigation chances of them being joined into the greater uh, litigation field, they just simply would not participate. So this uh, would change the focus more to litigation rather than of fixing leaky homes, and, sir, I don't want that to be the focus of this bill. The, the second SOP, Mr Twyford has tabled, SOP 251, seeks to amend the definition of qualifying claimant to exclude property speculators. And whereas I laud the, sort of the, the intent of that, the trouble is uh, that it, it, it goes further. His, his SOP certainly goes further and it could exclude anyone who knowingly purchased a leaky home, even if they had bought it as something they were going to do up and live in. That's what the... Yes, yes. Yes, it would. Yes, it would. That's what it would do. So, Mr Speaker, that's why the government won't support it. The aim of the scheme is to get as many leaky homes repaired as fast as we can. The scheme does not discriminate on the basis of who owns the home, uh, and it's to get the income repaired so that the owners and the renters can live in a safe environment. Now, sir, the SOP would prevent genuine homeowners who purchased intending to repair and live in a home from accessing the scheme. I repeat that again. You may be a genuine homeowner who sees a leaky home and think, I will buy that up, I will do it up, I'll do the repairs and I will then live in it. And the way the SOP is worded, sir, it will prevent a genuine uh, buyer from doing it. So we're not going to support that one, and I understand that the proposed change is grammatically incorrect, any rate, so we would need to make amendments to the SOP. But, uh, but uh, having said that, let's move on to the third one. The SOP 252 seeks to provide uh, that's, that the Crown will guarantee repair loans taken out by bodies corporate. And, Mr Chairman, I have to say that, in my view, and I think the officials have given me this advice, the SOP is actually not necessary. The government could choose to provide this guarantee under the existing provisions. This is because the existing provisions are general and do not specify the terms of any guarantee or indemnity under the provision. The reality is some multi-unit dwellings will not be able to access this financial package. That's true. But that may be the case with, even, without, even with this or without this amendment, but they always will have the access to the Weather Tights Homes Resolutions disputes process, which they have now. And I think that's probably an important point I make for anyone that is listening to this debate, that this entire package that the government is putting out there, the government paying 25, the local authority paying 25, and the homeowner uh, getting a, a loss-sharing arrangement with the bank for the remaining 50 per cent loan, is a voluntary package. No one has to take it. It is an attempt to try to get some homes fixed. And if people say, I don't like it, I don't want it, I'm going to resort to litigation or stay with the Tight Resolution Service or stay with uh, the tribunal, then they will still have that right. And finally, sir, Mr Twyford's last SOP, number 253, uh, that proposes to remove the Crown's immunity. Now, I want to say this. The Crown is making a huge contribution to this package and does not have to. 
We did not have to bring this package to this House. Uh, and in fact, when anyone, Mr. Chair, the Honourable Morris Mr. Williams. Chair, when other people have tried to join the Crown in litigation in the past, they have never been successful because the courts have ruled that the Crown is not in any way liable. So we could have taken the stance. I know the Labor government took that position, uh, rightly or wrongly, for the nine years they were in office, that it was not a liability of the government. So if we were to remove the immunity of the Crown, not only would we be putting up. The, the, what will be over a billion dollars of payment uh, in this package, possibly even more, depending on the number of people that take it up, we could be exposing the Crown to huge, huge litigation risk. So the Crown's immunity in the bill has been included because to date the government hasn't been found liable in leaky home litigation. And uh, I want to say that I think it's the best way to keep it. Now, uh, another benefit of the Crown of, in the immunity, it will remove incentives for vexatious of trying to join the Crown. A lot of people will be vexatious and say, I'm going to force the government to be in this. And now I want to talk about the DBH assessor's immunity, because that's <laughs> part of it as well. DBH assessors have always been immune from proceedings relating to their functions under the Weather Tights Home Resolution Service Act 2006, which was passed by Labor. I understand why Labor did that, and I think that's right. Assessors' immunity is critical for delivering a weather tight homes resolution service and a financial assistance package. Those people doing their job, doing it well, shouldn't be doing it under the threat of they don't have any immunity. Assessors will not perform this role if there is a risk that they may be joined in litigation about leaky homes. So, Mr Speaker, although I fully understand the rationale behind all four, in fact, I sympathise with some of the rationale behind all four. Can I say to members of this House, this has been a very long journey to get here today. This started off trying to get agreement across local authorities and to tie this package down is one of the hardest pieces of work I've done in my 24 years. But not only getting them, but then to bring the banks on side with regards to uh, their participation in the scheme has been a long, slow, arduous, and I've had the news media having a flick at me from time to time. He's failed to get them on board or he's failed to achieve this. Well, I'm happy to report that local authorities are signed up to this legislation as it stands. We would lose them immediately if we made the changes that were suggested here. The banks have now signed up to the package and are ready to go. And, Mr Speaker, I look forward to getting the Committee of the Whole finished a third reading of this bill through so that constituents of a number of members of Parliament, I know people like Darian Fenton and Lynn Pillay and West Auckland have a huge number of constituents, uh, as the members from the North Shore, as the members from Tauranga, Wellington and Christchurch, because that's where the vast majority of these places are, uh, are located. They are looking forward to having those people be able to walk in, get half of their repairs paid for straight away, half by the government, half by local authority, and getting a bank loan and, and moving on to getting the place fixed. I'm really delighted with this legislation. Mr Chairman, Mr. Chairman. I call Darian Fenton.